But first, to the Prime Minister's big announcement today. Actually, the price of political arrogance and failure for years. ASIO has decided to return Australia's national terrorism threat level from possible to probable. And it does not mean there is intelligence about an imminent threat or danger. But the advice that we've received is that more Australians are embracing a more diverse range of extreme ideologies and it is our responsibility to be vigilant. It's absolutely no surprise if the danger is now us because they're saying it's not really just about the imported terrorism. That's what we're told today. It's people on all sides of many causes. Here's the ASIO chief, Mike Burgess, Burgess on why he told the Prime Minister to raise the terrorism alert. More Australians are being radicalised and radicalised more quickly. More Australians are embracing a more diverse range of extreme ideologies and more Australians are willing to use violence to advance their cause. In some cases I refer to, the alleged perpetrators appear to be motivated by extreme religious beliefs. In others, nationalist and racist beliefs. Now, I think these guys are minimising exactly how much of the tension is driven by Islamist extremism. But there is a clue in what Burgess just said there to what's now going on. In Britain especially, by the way, but it is starting here. Now, as I've warned for years, or decades really, what our political and media class was doing, to both countries actually, would cause a backlash just as ugly and just as dangerous. You can't inflict policies on people like mass immigration and multiculturalism, even a brutal COVID lockdown. You can't go soft on imported extremists like some Sydney hate preachers here or let pro-Palestinian extremists take over the streets or even now bring in Palestinians from a territory where support for mass terrorism is overwhelming. You can't do all that and expect the locals to just cop it. You can't expect the people born here to always be reasonable and understanding or at least silent, especially people who are poor, not well-educated, feeling threatened in their own homes and their own jobs right now too when they're getting even poorer and all this when they meanwhile see our institutions trashed by our elites as you know oh it's racist uh, we're colonials uh, we're too white when our governments are offering apologies to race hustlers, race hustlers and, and giving them handouts our ASIO boss did touch a little on that I must say today he admitted that for instance the pro-Palestinian extremists have made all this worse and the Prime Minister also whacked the Greens, screaming that, you know, uh, it's Australia's complicit in genocide, which is a total Greens lie. And then there's the protesters who are getting in our face, making Jews scared to even walk our streets, even blockading the Prime Minister's own electorate office since February. Well, Albanese complained about that today when he should have actually cleared out those protesters months ago and showed leadership. But when you show this weakness... You have to prepare for a backlash. And we're now seeing exactly that in Britain over the last few days, which I think actually influenced today's announcement. Riots in many British cities by anti-immigration protesters, the so-called poor white trash, many just thugs, even trying to burn down a hotel of illegal immigrants in Rotherham and another in Staffordshire, smashing random windows in multi-ethnic areas of the working class cities in the Midlands and Yorkshire attacking police as if they're the enemy, demanding an end to mass immigration and a defence of England, or the idea of England. Now, Mike Burgess said he'd actually been watching all this in Britain. In terms of what's happening in the United Kingdom, we stay close with our mates and understand what's the drivers there. Every case is different. It's concerning behaviour, but looking behind that is important. That's why our experts stay in touch with our friends. Well, I hope ASIO has been watching a lot more closely than the journalists have seen commenting what's actually going on there because this is our future if we don't learn the right lessons. Now, we're told, oh, the British rights over the past few days, it's just about far-right thugs being racist after the murder of three young girls last week, allegedly by the son of immigrants from Rwanda. And certainly that is the way the British Prime Minister is treating this. I utterly condemn the far-right thuggery we've seen this weekend. Be in no doubt, those that have participated in this violence will face the full force of the law. I guarantee 
you will regret taking part in this disorder, whether directly or those whipping up this action online. Absolutely true. There are racists, there are thugs, there are idiots in those mobs who falsely believe the alleged killer was a, of those three girls was a Muslim and attacked the local mosque. But is that all? Because I think there's also another story. And it's one the media didn't want to hear, like the BBC when a former police commissioner tried to tell them there's a context to this. Just in the last month, Muslim men were bashing police at Manchester Airport, Roma immigrants attacking police and welfare workers, a man of African appearance stabbing Lieutenant Colonel walking in full uniform. This was the ugly backlash. Oh, no, no, don't want to hear any of that. You have to be very careful now with tempers the way they are and people's sense of angst of what had gone on in the preceding couple of days where you'd had an army officer stabbed in the back, the misleading representation in the northwest where this a, occurred. That's a different case there, Kevin, so uh, we'll leave it there. That's Kevin they're, Hurley. They're, they're not. You're missing the point. All of you are missing the point. People conflate this. And they make and, two and, I think and we're, two, and we're they make five. We're worsening that conflation by mentioning the two uh, cases together here. So we'll leave it there. It was farcical. Only tell us about white thugs, given there were even Muslim gangs in these riots looking for white protesters to bash, or just some white guy on the street. And the Police and Crime Commissioner for Hampshire also tried explaining why this tough talk about just white thugs from the Prime Minister, a man who'd bent the knee during sometimes violent Black Lives Matter protests, was failing. Commissioner Donna Jones warned the announcement of the Prime Minister's new violent crime units have led to an accusation of two-tier policing, which has inflamed protesters who state that they are battling to protect Britain's sovereignty, identity and stop illegal migration. The only way to stem the tide of violent disorder is to acknowledge what's causing it. Now, I know this is so tricky because acknowledging what's fueling these riots is like legitimising the inexcusable violence of thugs, of racists. But if we keep ignoring the pressures caused by mass immigration, Islamic radicalism, leftist assaults on our institutions, and now all this in a failing economy, then something is going to give. In Britain, it just has. And now this raised terrorism alert here, it's a warning that we're now in danger as well, thanks to the arrogance of the elites.